produce in Nigeria is the entertainment industry, whether anybody likes it or not. Mm -hmm. And why it is, is because they have incentivized the audience, they have incentivized people, okay? When they do things like Big Brother, you have thousands of people in queues. Maybe when um, David Doe does something, he gives out millions, you know? They just do things that are very, very selfless, and it helps people aspire to be like them in that industry. But then, then let's say you're outside the country, you hear a lot of their music. It's amazing. Like, it makes me feel happy anytime I'm hearing Border Boy, they do. In some places, you would never even imagine you would hear them. Okay? So, kudos to the entertainment industry and people, you know, pushing that part of the world. So, one of the things we started to do, right? I mean, we can't, um, things, you take things in incremental order. You can't really just do everything well. So, one of the things we started to do at one of our companies, um, Zen Finance, is to build, is, uh, um, like to, is to have a hackathon. So this year, I think we started in September, we organized a hackathon where we would give out um, a grant and when we also have investments. So overall people would access, the winners would access $120,000 as that's people who win and then they also access over a million dollars worth of investments. And it really, you know, it, was, it wasn't something that people had done, it's actually like the biggest hackathon organized by an independent um, or a private company in Africa. So it was something that we did to build or to push that um, incentive into the minds of young people. And we got like a lot of applicants. People were started, people had started building stuff and then it also started submitting. We we're announcing the winners um, I think by December 21st. Sorry if you can go to. Then you know we also started um, looking at how are we going to also invest more in young people apart from maybe having a hackathon like this. Because most times you see young builders or young engineers, um, you know, saying things like, hey, I need uh, maybe some form of investment, um, or maybe I need to raise capital. But then, when you look at the person, the person hasn't really even done anything, right? The person is just coming, oh, um, please, can you invest in my company? I have an idea. That's why, like, we have this to build first. Now, this is basically what I do on a daily basis, right? It's not like uh, most people, might be like, um, okay, so what do you do? This is, I just sit down and, I, and we fix things or we build things, you know, and I find it really exciting and intriguing to do that with my colleagues, my friends, and, you know, family as well. So we've, you know, looked at some investment pieces. What I mean is, what are the things that will drive us really? How was like our design to invest in companies? You know, when we look at um, our uh, people who are applying, right, what we do is, we check, we, like, we, we check, okay, what's your tech? What have you built? Now, when you build something, you pitch to us, and then we invest. One thing we've been able to achieve this year is we've been able to write checks of close to $200,000 for companies just in Enugu. And that's something that is, you know, really, really great. Looking at most of these startups, right, wouldn't really be able to access this funding beyond now. And it's really interesting to know that, okay, instead of them to, you know, just die, because most people might not think what they are doing makes sense. We understand what they are doing and we're willing to go on that journey with them. So this is something that we've been able to achieve. I would like to like take myself back a little bit. I think in 2000, we started this whole thing in 2014, you know, and um, 2014 I used to work at KPMG. I did my internship there. So basically at that time, during breaks or after work, I would take um, some um, like take bus to some places in Lekki to sell software, you know, and it was really difficult then because nobody knew me and I was in a new environment. I was in Lagos. I didn't grow up in Lagos, so but I said, okay, I'll continuously do this thing. You will pitch to multiple people, they will reject you obviously, and then um, you know it was it was a pain to be able to you know to go every day every day and having to also do work. But yeah, I just kept at it and fast forward till now. Um, 2021, we've been able to build, uh, you know, series of companies. Some you might know, some you might not know. I'll just try to mention if you like, okay, Zen Finance or Google, um, Ycrypt, um, here in Enugu, we um, had a partnership with them as Enugu Wi-Fi. We have the gaming store, people make games, people play here, and you know, on a lot of parts of the world. We also invest a lot in like research, so we have our own like research system where we, you know, help to build things or to work on things that people might not even use now, maybe in the next 10 to 20 years, right? So these are things we've done over these years. And overall, most of these companies combined are like over like $300 million in net worth, 
and they were all done here in Enugu, right? It's most like a lot of those people that have viewed these companies are sitting right here. And just like I said, when 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 you look around, right, you will not even know who they are. They just look normal. They don't move around with police escorts, <laughs> right? Most of us, they might even be wearing short naked, right? You don't know who they are. That's the beautiful thing about Enugu. Gives us that security, you know. For some time we feel the we've been threatened, you know, with the current happenings in, in Nigeria. But then I think it's it's getting better. And if we have this amount of aqua, we need to guard it jealously, right? And um, also, okay, just taking a look at you know most of the people that we have um, or we work with. I mean, it's not exhaustive. And something else I would like to mention is. In the whole process of trying to build a company, it must not be tech. You know, process of trying to build a business. There are some key principles I try to follow. I heard this in 2013 by my CEDR lecture on entrepreneurship. I know some of you did too. <laughs> yeah, many of you went to UN and I don't know if you know Mr. Robot. Some people might know him, right? Yeah, so so Mr. Robot will tell you that you have to be it's, it's like persistence, perseverance and dogged hard work. Keeping at something, no matter how much you know it takes from you, you just keep at it. Just like um, Chigero said, and I agree with her. I remember when we started doing this, nobody was paying us a dime. In fact, the first school we signed up, we did for free for almost a year for them to just trust that we know what we're doing, right? Because they see a small person that doesn't drive a big car. You don't even drive there. Times you might use keke, your car will stop you on the road. You just hustle and go do your presentation. Hit yeah. your kid at times. Your computer is not fast enough, so it's hanging. Don't tell them excuse me. You're checking. You're checking. No, that kind of thing. So, so you see, those are some of the constraints that we had. But now we're able to like bypass them, and it's just keeping at it. You know, being persistent. You know, just going at it, no matter what it takes. And then something that is very critical also to your growth. No matter how much of a big boy you think that you are a big girl, is a support system. A support system is invaluable. When you look at the support system, your family is number one. I remember when I wanted to start this whole thing, when my basically when I resigned from my job that um, I was working as a software engineer, then I was in my room basically. Then my mom will come out because I mean my um, parents are you know. They are civil servants and they're very good with new academics and you know, some of told you that we go eat in on a room every morning. <laughs> you know, my dad came with his own that ah, are you sure you're not gonna do masters and PhD? I was like, I didn't really want to do that, but okay. But one thing is they always supported, right? I mean, I wasn't earning a salary, but then they would give you food. In fact, when we started, I think some of our employees uh, and partners here, they were all, my mom would come and cook food for everybody. In fact, when we left the house then, they were like, hey, you know, that we miss your mom's food. Though. You know that kind of thing, but we just had to now hustle on our own because we were now you know, making some, some small money. And then, it was really cool because that support system helped. My brothers, right, in any way they could, I, I mean, it's so amazing. Anytime you call home, they will respond, even if they didn't have as much. Uncles and aunts and all that, you know, friends. I never for one day, the only problem I had with some of my friends, and some of them are here, I think some of them, is just that I, I was unable to attend a lot of events, even till now. Because when I was in school, we had like happening friends and everything. I was on scholarship, we were always spending money on party, you know, so it was it was cool. So I had a lot of happening friends, but it would be difficult to, you know, go and have that same kind of um, lifestyle outside school. Why? Because you can't be partying when you have bills to pay. And that's why whenever you have that support system, like I said, it's really, really invaluable. You cannot overestimate the importance of a good support system. Some people, you hear stories of some people telling you that oh, they are trying to do this and their parents are saying, get out, go and do this. My parents never did that. You know? But it's not an excuse for you not to still push. Because one of the things we are trying to do now is to create an environment where you cannot give people that money. Even if they are in an environment where they are not supported, with the money they can create an enabling environment for themselves. That's the whole purpose of the investment. And um, I have some people, and there's a story I want to like tell about four people. I mean, it's not exhaustive, but I call them the four horsemen. It's not the ones from the apocalypse, you know. But one of the things I just like, we have um, um, that, um, sorry, that's um, good luck. So I thought, well, I, some of you that know of Google, um, good luck is actually, um, so he used to be an Ogugo rider. 
Some of you might have seen him. I don't know how many of you. I mean, there are just a lot of people that we deliver to. But he used to be on Google Ride, I think, for about two years. But then we realized that this guy had some. He used to maybe fix computers before he started writing. Because so many things will make people do things, right? So when, when, when I saw that, I was like, no, 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 no. We have to move him to the software development team. So we had to stop him from writing. And then he started building software. And now, because there are a lot of people that we work with, I'm always very excited when maybe you're on the committee, I'm asking some senior engineers, guy, when is this thing going to be ready? And they tell me, oh, good luck, he's about to push code. He's about to, and it makes me so happy because he's now a core part of our engineering team, right? And that's how you integrate people. Something into like something that you know that isn't what you're supposed to be into something much bigger. And then I also look at um, um, Adobe. So Adobe is um, she, she graduated from UNIZIC with biochem from biochemistry. Basically, so I think she, it was from Genesis Tech Hub, basically Tech Hub. So she was supposed to come and just do like internship at the time. I think when Genesis was starting and everything. So we, they were like, oh, even what the guy told me was, please, even if she's going to be buying food for your people. He's going to buy lunch. I thought that nobody buys lunch for us. It's better you either you come to work or you don't come at all. Because I tried to be like that. And then she came in and without having any knowledge in computing, now she leads our like software team in the front end in one of our companies, White Clips, also working on very complex things like the blockchain. It's insane. Right? So you, you look at people from a non-computing background, and I'm saying this because that's a lot of people be here, oh, maybe I'm not studying computer, computer science and all that. Then I have a Chibuzo, and I also have a Ebube. Ebube is an, I'll start with Ebube, Ebube is an economist. It's not the economics in Godfrey Ukwe University. No background in computing. So what really caught my attention was that he, he was writing code on his phone. It broke, the phone is actually broke, like massive cracks, right, in 2017. But he'll be building something there. I have very big hands. I, I hate to type on my phone because it hurts me. But this guy is also quite tall. He'll be building stuff on his own, writing serious code, and building something. You know, with a phone that is handy, before people say, I don't have a computer. We have a smartphone. This guy was building, it, it was so intriguing that I said, it's not possible. We just have to do something, right? And when we just got a computer, and like, currently, right, he's actually chief executive officer of one of our companies, our gaming company. He's actually a CEO of one of our establishments. And that's how people have built their way up. Then Chibuzo is, and I always try to guard him against international people because, yeah, so he builds things that everybody sees. At times when you see some nice design in some of the apps, he's actually the one in charge. He builds every single thing, does every single kind of design. So many times, some people who have invested in our companies have tried to coach him, saying, ah, Hugo, we'll pay this guy like two times, three times. I know they have more money than us. Well, tell them, no, he's not going to work for you, right? He came from, um, go for a university as well. Just stepped into the office and said he wanted internship. Then we had a very small office. I told him, okay, I just, most times I try to make people just go away because there are just too many things that might be disturbing you. So I gave him one very difficult website to go and recreate. I said, in this life, this guy can't get this thing. <laughs> and I traveled. Two weeks later, the guy sent me an email, please look at this file. That, like, is this guy joking? The name of the website is boring, like a music site, really complex from UI or like, you know, designs. And he did everything. I just said we must hire him. And he has been leading our UX team. Very brilliant. Um, one thing I would like to just end with is um, the, like, something about the Chinese bamboo tree, you know. Um, so the Chinese bamboo tree is, um, it's a tree that when you plant it, right, it stays in the ground for five years. And you have to water it every single day. And then it doesn't grow. But when it grows, it gets to 90 feet in five weeks. I don't know if you can estimate 90 feet. I think it's mostly obviously taller than this place, right? And that takes me to strongly speak on the difference between motivation and discipline. I really don't, I'm not here to motivate anybody, right? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You can feel pumped. But the moment you leave this place, and you wake up tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not motivation yeah. that will make you to take that next step. Yes. It's discipline. Yes. It's discipline that will make you wake up and go to your class by seven. It's discipline that will make you wake up and say, I'm not touching Instagram. Right? And you want to study. It's discipline that will actually make you take that next step. 
It's not motivation. Motivation doesn't cut it. Discipline takes you light years ahead of every other person. So I would love to say in conclusion that really, Nandeba and Akodeba, and as much as possible, let us try to improve ourselves. Let us try to help ourselves. Let us also know that really there isn't anything that is beyond you. I mean, we did all these things here in Enugu. We've not even started, right? And you need the people. You need the support system, you need the friends, you need the family. Don't write anyone off. Be humble, like Chibiel said. And I think you guys will be able to do amazing things. Thank you.